Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and today I've released my B Asset Tools, which is a set of tools for Blender and Unity that allows you to export uh, the transforms of a collection of objects from Blender into a B Asset file format, which is a JSON file, and then import that B Asset file into Unity as a prefab. So we can export this selection of objects as beams.bassset, go over to Unity, we have beams.bassset, we can, it's a prefab, it creates a prefab asset on that file, and then we can drag it into the scene with all of the objects spawned. Um, obviously, there's more to it than that. I want to go into it all. Um, I want to go through all the settings, and I prepared three different examples to sort of demonstrate what it can do. And then at the end, I'll go through how you can install it and everything. Uh, you can purchase the B Asset Tools on my Gumroad page. The link for that is in the description. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go through the options on the uh, BSet exporter, which is the Blender add-on. Um, it has this name field, which allows you to edit the object data name. It's the same as this field here. That's the name that's used when you save a quick save an FBX file. Then there's a op button that runs an operator to save the selected object as an FBX file in a single click. Then there's another name field. Um, this one's just unique to the Blend file and will be used when saving a B asset file or a, a Unity prefab, essentially. And then there's another button for an operator that saves the B asset file. That's all there is to it for the Blender exporter, other than that in the user preferences, under the options for the B asset exporter, there's some preferences, which are paths to where you want to save the files um, so that you can do that export in a single click. That's something that you should only have to set once, and then it can just stay there until you start working on a new project or something. Then in Unity on the importer, it will search through your asset database to find prefabs or mesh objects with the same name as the instances it needs to spawn. And then if you select the B asset file, it will show you all of the instances that that file contains and allow you to remap those to different prefabs or game objects if you desire to do that. You can see there's this B asset folder that will get imported when you bring in the Unity package. You can see that it has four subdirectories that will contain different files. The FBX subdirectory is intended to be where the Blender preference for the path points to for quick saving FBX files. The JSON folder is intended to be where the Blender path points to to save B asset files. Then the prefabs folder is intended to contain prefabs that are made from FBX meshes. And the collections folder is intended to contain prefabs that are made out of B asset files. So for our first example here, we have this tree, and just to show the first thing that can go wrong, um, I'm just going to click export B asset, which will work. It'll save all the transforms to the B asset file. But we haven't exported any of the meshes that that prefab is composed of, so it's not going to import correctly. Then in Unity, we can go to our JSON folder, and we'll find a tree one B asset file. That B asset file has no game objects assigned to it, and you can see we have some error messages because none of the meshes that it needs have been exported. Now we can, if we want, select objects to spawn here and apply that. And then if we drag that tree in the scene, we can see we have a cube where the trunk should be. But what we can see over here is that there's five instances that the importer is looking for when we import this tree one B asset file. So if we go back to Blender, we can create those mesh assets so that when we import the B asset file, it will be able to find them all. So we can see here we have this tree is generated by my tree generator nodes. So the trunk is a curve object, and then the leaves are all instances of these meshes. So the first thing to, just to be aware of, I guess, is that when you instance objects in geometry nodes or something, those instances share the object data of the meshes that they're instanced from. And the name of that data is defined on the object data or the mesh tab. And you can see that here. So this is leaves one. And then if we inspect the object in the spreadsheet, we can see that there's all these instances with all these different numbered leaves. So when you export this tree, it's going to take those instance names. And you can see that those instance names match the names of the instances that Unity knows about. So all we have to do to create that mesh data in Unity is select the objects that we're instancing on our tree and click export leaves one FBX, select the next one, leaves two, and so on. Then back in Unity, we'll get an import 
progress bar, and then we can see if we go to the FBX folder, we have leaves one, two, three, and four. Now I did cheat here, I set up all the materials beforehand. Um, you will still have to set up the materials, it doesn't do anything fancy with that. Um, so that's our four leaf prefabs. Um, all that we're still missing is the trunk. And another thing that's useful to know about Blender is that if you try to export a mesh that has instance objects in it, the instances won't get exported. So in this case, all we have to do is select our tree and export that as an FBX. All of the leaf instances will be ignored because um, we didn't realize them, and then it will export the curve it converted to a mesh. So if we go back over to Unity, we'll get another import. Now we have this trunk one. We can see that this one came in without the material because the name um, got renamed. Let's just fix that. We can export it again. Go back to Unity. Now it has the right name, but it was already imported, so it's still set to none. We can just search and remap and apply that. So now we have the five mesh objects that the B asset was trying to instance. We can go back to our tree one B asset, right click on it and re-import. And you can see that it was able to find and bring in those leaf objects. Now we did remap the trunk to this cube, so we can either select the trunk object or we can also just change the length of this array to zero and then apply that, which will cause it to rebuild that list from scratch and find the default trunk object. And just like that, we've got our tree from Blender imported into the scene um, as a prefab with all of the individual parts placed correctly. Going back to Blender, let's switch to the second example. The second example is the building that I made for the demonstration of the build nodes. Um, so in this case, we have a couple different parts, sort of like the tree. There's the, the building itself, which is a custom mesh, and then there's the instance objects, which are all the windows and doors and things. So to export all of this to Unity, what I've done is I put all of the parts of the building that I want to export into a collection called export. And then I have this cube here, which I put a collection to object node on. And if we choose the house export collection, we can create a copy of the parts of the building that are unique and we need to save as a mesh. We can just name that cube house one and export it as an FBX file. Then we can just check in Unity to make sure it came in correctly. It'll be in the FBX folder. It's house one. We can see the materials didn't come in correctly, so we can search for the materials and apply that. And then we can just reset the transform to zero so that it's placed correctly in this example scene. So now we have the overall structure of the building, but we still need all the windows and doors and everything. So let's go back to Blender. And this time we know that we need to export the meshes that will be instanced, so let's do that first. We have four of them here, two doors and two windows. They have this Boolean cutting mesh that we don't want to include. So I added this bool cleanup group to the collection to object node. So if we unmute that node, it will delete the Boolean cutting mesh out of our doors and windows. That will break the Boolean on the building, um, but we can turn it back on after we've exported our FBX files. So then to create the FBX files for this, it's as simple as selecting each of them and clicking export FBX. And then once we've done that, we can mute the bool cleanup node again to restore the cutting capabilities of our doors and windows. Then we can go over to Unity and make sure all the materials came in correctly. So that one looks fine. This one didn't work. All right, so now we have all our materials set. We can go back to Blender, select our doors and windows object. Now when you export a bassett file, it will run the make instances real operator to, to turn all of the instances that are created by the geometry nodes into actual objects with shared mesh data. And when it does that, the object that's spawning all of those instances will still exist. So by default, like with the tree, the trunk, which is spawning all of the leaf instances, is included and also exported in the bassett file. If you want the emitter, so to speak, to not be included in the bassett file, you can just give it a name that starts with an underscore, and any object whose name starts with an underscore will be ignored by the bassett exporter. So we'll do that. We'll put an underscore here to ignore the mesh that's spawning all of the doors and windows, and then we want to rename this doors and windows. 
and then we can export that bsit file. It'll just take a second, and then when it's done, we can go back to Unity, go to our JSON folder, drag our doors and windows in, and set the transform to zero, which will place it correctly in the scene. And all of those doors and windows, again, are individual objects. And if we wanted to add animations or doors that could swing, collision, physics, or whatever to any of that, all we have to do is go to our FBX folder, select the object that we want to work on, right-click on it. I've added this copy to prefab operator to the asset context menu. If you click on that, it will create a prefab in the prefabs folder with the same name. And inside of that prefab, you can add whatever sort of scripts or components you want to make your object interactable. So in this case, as an example, maybe we'll add a box collider. So now we have collision on this door. Uh, maybe it's a trigger and we can detect something, whatever your case may be. We'll save that prefab. And if we go back to our JSON file and select our doors and windows, let's get out of this prefab. So now we have our door arched prefab with the box collider on it. But in the scene, you can see none of the doors have that box collider yet. The way to update the B asset file is to go back to the JSON folder, select the doors and windows B asset file, and clear out the instances by setting the length to zero and applying it, which will cause it to search again. And this time it will find the prefab for the door rather than the FBX file. And now if we select our doors and windows, you can see that the box collider has been added to the arch doors. Another thing you can do is just like you can convert an FBX file to a prefab, you can also copy a B asset file to a prefab, which will be put in the collections folder and that's useful when you want to add scripts and components or additional game objects to your bsit file, but still have it linked so you can export an update from Blender and um, work in a non-destructive way. So now moving into our third example, we can take this even a step further and create bsit prefabs where the instances are themselves other B assets. So I'll show how you can do that here. So here I have created some planes and I've put a collection scatter node on them and I've selected as the collection a, this tree instance so if we turn that on we can see that and we can see that tree is just an object that has the name tree1 um, what I want to point out is when you export this to a bsid file it's just a name it's just tree1 as a string so in unity you can make tree1 be whatever sort of prefab you want you could make it a spaceship if you wanted to and of course, we can also mix that with regular FBX files. So here I have a second collection scatter object, and it scatters these grassy plant objects. So first, let's just set this up here. We can export all of our grass FBX files. But we don't need to export the tree, because rather than having it be an FBX file with all of the vertices um, saved, all the copies of the leaves saved as vertices, um, We'd rather use the version of the tree that we exported as a B asset earlier. So I'm pretty sure we named it tree one, but we can also just go over here and copy it to a prefab to make sure. Maybe in our collections here, we want to add some collision to the trunk or something. So we could come in, come in here and add an empty. Call it collision. We'll just add a capsule collider to it and move it up a bit. We'll call that our tree trunk collision. So let's save that, exit out. Now we have our tree one prefab, and over in Blender we have our object that's where the instances that will be exported to the bsid file will be named tree one. We can just select our two collection scatter objects, which by the way, both of their names start with an underscore, so they won't be included in the bsid export. And then we'll just change the name of our bsid file to foliage, and we'll export a foliage bsid. Then over in Unity, we can go to our JSON folder, see our foliage B asset file, um, see that it has a tree prefab as well as the grass FBX files. Um, and we can just drag that into our scene, set the transform to zero so that everything lines up. And you can see the collision on all of the trees as well as all of the grass scattered and placed on the surface of the terrain because it was raycast against that in Blender. All placed with geometry nodes, all imported as a prefab um, into Unity.
So that's what the BSIT tools allow you to do. I think it's a really powerful and flexible workflow and it makes it easy to transfer mesh data into Unity. And it opens up a whole bunch of possibilities for scattering assets in Blender and then bringing that arrangement into Unity. Because I would say Blender has a lot more powerful tools for setting the positions of things, especially when you can use geometry nodes to scatter instances and stuff like that. So, so that's it for the examples. I have written documentation for it. Um, hopefully I covered everything there. And if I didn't, fr feel free to contact me with any questions about it. So then all I want to do here at the end is just show how you install it into a fresh Unity project. Um, so there'll be two files in the download section. The Unity package, you can just drag and drop into your Unity project. It'll bring up this import Unity package, and you can just click import and say yes to everything. Once it's imported, you should have the BSet folder with its five subdirectories. The scripts folder just contains the importer script itself, as well as the UI for the importer. And then it will create four subdirectories, um, which all just have a placeholder text file in it that contains a bit of text about what the directory is supposed to be used for. One thing you'll need to do is right click on one of the folders and click show and explore. Then just go into the FBX folder and copy that path because we'll need to set that in the Blender exporter's user preferences. Then over in Blender, you'll want to go to Edit Preferences. On the Add-ons tab, you'll want to click Install and then select the BSit exporter.zip file and click Install Add-on. Once you do that, it should um, appear as an option. You can enable it and then there'll be these two paths in the preferences. And then just paste the folder that you copied from your Unity Assets folder into the Mesh Export path. That should be the FBX directory. And, and then you can paste it in the Asset Export path, and that should be the JSON directory. So you can just change the end of it, or you could copy that as well. And then once you've done that, that's all you need to do. You, you can close the preferences, and you should be able to... And you, sh and you should be able to export the FBX files... and then export a B asset. And if we go back to that empty project, you can see it imported. We have the leaves in the trunk, and then we have foliage. Don't have the materials in this file, but you can see that it was able to bring in the geometry. So that's all it takes to get it set up and installed in Blender and in the Unity project. Um, and if it doesn't work, if there's any questions, feel free to contact me with those. The B Asset Tools is available to be purchased on my Gumroad page, and that contains both the Blender add-on and the Unity package. So if you use Blender and you use Unity and you want a super easy way to transfer mesh data between the two, or if you want to be able to export geometry node stuff to Unity, or if you're just like me and you prefer arranging things in Blender over arranging things in Unity, um, then you should check it out. Um, I think it could save you a ton of time. So hopefully that's interesting to you. That's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.